Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Pollock and I'm the Customer Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, The Power of HCM and ERP, Maximizing Resources, Profits and Engagement, presented by Mary Sue McCl McClintock and Jessica Morency. Before we get started, let's go over some housekeeping items. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can submit any questions you have. Like to submit a question, look for the question section of your GoToWebinar panel or the chat box, and we'll answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We're also recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees, as well as those who registered but were unable to attend. And finally, we'd appreciate your participation in our closing survey. With that said, we're thrilled that you've taken some time out of your busy day to be with us on this webinar. SWK is here to help you fulfill your vision of a smarter and easier way to run your business by providing your tools, support, software, and industry knowledge whenever you need it. So whether you're here to explore new solutions or you're just here to learn, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have. And as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. Check us out and give us a follow on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube so you don't miss out. Okay? That's enough from me. Let's hand it over to Mary Sue and Jessica for the main event. Thanks, Courtney, and thanks, SWK. Hopefully, everyone can hear me. I'm thrilled to be here today. Uh, as Courtney mentioned, I'm Mary Sue McClintock, and I am in channel development here at um, uh, Workforce Go. And I'm joined with my coworker, Jessica Morency, who is a regional sales manager. Together, we're excited to introduce to you. Um, Workforce Go HCM. Uh, I'll kick things off initially with a brief little introduction, share some industry information, um, talk about how we can maximize profits and engagements um, through utilizing Workforce Go and an ERP system that you might be using, and then certainly pass that off to Jessica where she can talk about some of the integration as well as give a brief demo. So without further ado, we'll get started. Um, Bear with me one sec. I'm actually going to go off camera just so I can make sure connectivity is good. Um, and I'm not seeing that screen, so sorry about this, folks. Give me just one minute. And hopefully everything is visually in a good place. Looks good, Mary. Okay, super. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, I like to start with this slide because this kind of lets you see what we focus on, right? Payroll, people, and time. And I think it's really important to make sure that you know that we believe work is personal. We focus on creating software that delivers connected work and meaningful experiences for your employees. So we think that's really important. As you can see, there's some really happy people on the screen here. Um, they are feeling inspired and excited because they just got paid. And more importantly, they didn't have to think about, did they um, uh, uh, get all of the deductions that were necessary? Um, were their taxes handled appropriately? Um, instead, it was just done easily, seamlessly, effortlessly, and they were paid on time. And that's really our job to make sure that all of that happens and that we're building those great work experiences for employees like you see here. So let me jump to the next slide and just share a little information about Workforce Go on the number side. Um, just to give you a feel, we have about 35,000 lives that we actively work with, our employees on the system. Um, we are working with about 460 clients, but that number is growing pretty rapidly uh, for folks using Workforce Go. And then our clients range in size from 10 to 4,000, 10 certainly not being the lowest, um, but certainly um, we do have customers um, uh, lower with less um, employees than that. But we range, I would say, a good range between 10 and 250, 10 and 500 being our sweet spot. Um, but it's important to note that we can handle those very complex requirements and complex needs for some of those larger organizations. Uh, we do that with ease, not a problem. We have over 100 partner relationships, one of those being our fabulous partners and friends at SWK. And then we do work with about 35 different industries. Um, they are a range 
And um, Barry, I'd say our top five industries right now are construction, maybe manufacturing, nonprofit, um, uh, healthcare, um, retail. And that is something that varies really depending upon uh, you know, the, the timing and things like that. But um, over 35 different industries are represented. And then I think a big one is client retention. Uh, we love to boast about client retention. It is a very important number to us. Uh, we have a dedicated um, client support team and a client success team. So a tiered approach so that we make sure that we're giving you um, uh, the best attention and providing the best support so that we can retain our clients. And we've done a really great job right now sitting at a 97% um, rate. So let me jump in and talk a little bit more about those meaningful work experiences. Uh, we feel like we've created an excellent equation to kind of maximize profits um, and um, engagements with your, with your employees. And it really all starts here. Uh, if I begin with the first one, it's building stronger connections, right? You, we wanna make sure that you know that it's important to promote collaboration and unity and really focus on your teams and uh, your organization as a whole and building those connections. We'll add to that enhanced relevance. So how can we make sure that your employees um, are, are uh, that we're driving engagement, that they're more relevant, um, that they're aligning with your organization's goals? We'll add optimizing resources as another great factor um, in the equation. We wanna make sure that we have the right people Right, that you have the right people in the right place at the right time and that the resources that you're using are being as um, efficient as they can um, and, and really being optimized. And then efficient communication, that kind of goes without saying because it crosses so many different modules, but having that efficient communication will empower your team to communicate effectively um, and ultimately facilitate some better decision making and problem solving. And then we wrap up the equation with seamless integration, right? Um, Workforce Go HCM um, is a, a powerful modern cloud-based solution that integrates with um, ERP and accounting systems, whether it be Acumatica or Sage Intact or many of the others as well. Uh, the goal there is to increase operational efficiency and data accuracy. And all of this package together ultimately is going to give us improved employee engagement, profitability and growth, and um, really just make for a, a perfect scenario. So I'd like to dig a little deeper into each one of these, and we'll start with um, building stronger connections. We know your employees are your most valuable asset, so we want to ensure that you are able to nurture employee engagement, and you can do that a number of ways that you see here. First and foremost is facilitating a positive workspace. So we want your employees to feel good. You want them to feel positive about your organization. You're looking for loyalty and enthusiasm for your company. So how can your HCM help you to do that, right? We'll incorporate your company culture into um, things that you uh, push out, whether it be alerts, maybe reminders about days off for employees or wellness activities company goals and initiatives. You wanna make sure that they're current on company news or current events. If your organization is working on a philanthropic initiative, we wanna push that out to your employees so that they too understand it um, as well. So really important um, uh, for that, as well as compliance and security. You want your employees to feel connected and safe um, again, giving them that enthusiasm and loyalty uh, uh, with a positive workspace. The second one I've listed here is employee self-service. Um, and I'll read this little quote here. On average, HR teams receive more than 1,000 pay-related inquiries a year from employees not utilizing self-service. And if I have HR folks on the call, I know that they're you know, shaking their head right now because uh, they take those calls and they know. Um, so it is critical to incorporate a self-service model um, into your system. Uh, there's no better way to stay connected. Making sure those employees are managing their own data, that they have 24 seven mobile access to their data, whether it be payroll, benefits, demographic information, 
um, that they're not calling HR to change their direct deposit or request time off, um, uh, that they're able to clock in and clock out, um, get a task assigned to them. Everything can be completed within that self-service module, that central information hub, all in one system, all in one location. And then communication efficiency. You'll hear me talk a lot about communication today because it crosses so many components um, of an HCM, but it really goes without saying, uh, it is important that communication happens at all touch points within the life cycle of an employee and that whether it be alerts, maybe, or even reminders about various tasks or things that are happening. And we'll talk a little bit more about communication um, in just a bit. But we're gonna jump to the next one, right? We're adding to our equation and we're getting to enhance relevance. Um, you'll see a couple of things here. We wanna make sure that work is relevant for employees so that we'll drive that engagement. And one of the ways to make sure that we do that is to enhance our employee experience. Again, I'll read this quote. HR Future reported that a number of HR decision makers that highlighted employee experience as the most important part of their HR strategy would triple over the next two years. So, I mean, that's huge, right? We know that everybody is, it's a driving force in so many organizations right now. Companies are really spending energy and effort on making sure that experience um, is great, whether it be from hire or to retire. So. If we're talking about the beginning stages, maybe in the recruitment process, um, uh, whether we're mapping out um, uh, ideal candidates for a journey so that it feels uh, very personalized in that process, you know, making it easy for them and we're posting to job boards automatically, um, you can find that ideal candidate or a perfect best fit candidate um, using automated workflows to reduce time to hire. Uh, that feels very personal because it's um, providing some very responsive, quick information uh, for those candidates, um, really just rewarding performance as well. And then if we move on through that life cycle, we get to personalized learning and development. Uh, great training is a win-win, right? So 71% of employees say that job training and development increases their job satisfaction. So what better way than incorporating a training management system um, into your HCM so that you can streamline training, um, develop your employees, um, empower them with self-paced training. Uh, they want to work on their development and their growth. And, and they can do that by having a personalized dashboard where they see courses that are required and available to them. Um, maybe even do a little friendly um, co-worker competition uh, where you are competing against co-workers and encouraging career advancements and leadership by earning badges and rewards. Um, ultimately, all ways to kind of help improve um, employee relevance and maximize profits. So we'll jump to the next piece of the equation, which is optimizing resources. Um, and this again is putting the right people in the right place at the right time. And there's two key areas that I like to focus on here. And I think workforce planning is a really big one. Um, it is, is critical in this process. So we have an advanced scheduling tool that will allow you to connect schedules um, to the needs of your business. Um, you can populate schedules based on your budget needs, your staffing requirements, your employee preferences. Um, you can even boost employee engagement by posting open shifts within your organization directly to um, those folks that meet certain requirements. So there's nothing that feels more personal than that. And we offer a robust, robust reporting tool within a people insights um, section of the software that really um, helps to, for example, um, uh, reduce flight risk. So you can run reports to recognize when people are getting ready to leave within your organization um, and figure out what's causing it, re-engage with those folks, um, and then course correct. Um, so save those employees um, all included there in that workforce planning. And then increasing productivity. I think we'll hear this again. How do we keep gaining efficiencies within the system and, we, and giving time back to those employees so that they can do things that matter most within their jobs? 
Um, imagine, um, as you see here, HR managers lose 14 hours per week on tasks that could be automated. Again, I know my HR folks are like, yep, I thought it was more than that. But um, but yeah, that's a big number. I mean, uh, whether, especially during those busy times. So if you think about during open enrollment or annual increases or the year end process, um, being able to create automation during those processes and during those or in those processes during those times is going to be huge. It'll save a significant amount of time and um, increase productivity, you know, ease the burden of uh, the headache of all the things that you're doing there. And in addition, compliance is another big one that's kind of a, a, a time drain where we know how important it is, right? Um, but to ensure that your organization stays compliant throughout that entire employee life cycle, we can automate processes that focus on um, um, some compliance. So uh, you focus less on it and we take on that burden, um, whether it be, um, oh gosh, ACA reporting or leave of absence or OSHA compliance, EO or VET reporting, whatever it might be, we will help you stay on task um, with those, those pieces. All right, so we're back to some more communication here because this is a big one. Um, we want to make better decisions. And so in order to do that, let's create some efficiencies and automate communication or make communication better. Um, and we can do that a couple of ways here. Um, we can ensure that we have mobile accessibility within the system, right? Mobile accessibility is key. Employees are 60% more likely to access pay information through an HR mobile app than through a laptop or desktop computer. So we know they're using it. We know that employees want that more than anything. Um, so it is really key that you have that um, ability for them to have that accessibility as well as that self-service module. So for instance, they're out buying a car um, they are having this great experience at the dealer, or maybe not a great experience at the dealer, but we want to make it even better for them. So they get to the phase where they're ready to get the loan and they need to pull up salary information. They can do that from their phones. Maybe they're um, working with a, in a doctor's office and need to confirm their benefits information. Um, we want them to be able to do that. Or working with a financial advisor and can't remember their plan. Um, so they'll be able to pull all of that up through that mobile accessibility, just making it easier for them. And then feedback and follow up, right? This, this again, kind of goes without saying. You, you always want to make sure that we're doing that. We know how important it is, but sometimes it's just difficult to do. So with a Workforce Go, you'll be able to do that from the beginning all the way through, whether it's in the pre-boarding stage, right? We know how important uh, that stage can be. Uh, Sherm actually said that 81% of new employees want to receive information about the new job during the pre-boarding phase. So let's let's make that easier. Let's foster relationships with those folks and communicate before the first day of work, introduce them to the team. Let's ease some anxiety for them. Um, maybe tell them what should they wear to work on the first day? Where would they park? Uh, where can they eat lunch? Um, let's push that feedback, follow-up communication out to them during that pre-boarding. And as they continue through on to onboarding, right? If we're looking to reduce turnover, we know how important it is to ensure that onboarding is effective um, and that we're following up on a regular basis. And then I think probably the more obvious one um, is performance management tools. Um, so keeping those employees um, in tune with um, uh, their uh, requirements, uh, that they're on track, that they're accountable, uh, that they receive uh, feedback through the system, that it's consistent, that it's relevant. Um, and then, of course, job performance um, and career development, right? We want to help them succeed as best as we can. And then we'll wrap up with this last uh, little piece of the equation, which is our seamless integration. Um, I've talked a lot about uh, uh, efficiencies and giving time back to um, employees so that they can focus on important tasks like user experience and things like that. Um, but we also want to make sure that, uh, that you know that getting rid of those manual processes, the things that are counterproductive, um, that are just draining our staff, uh, that this seamless integration from your HCM solution or Workforce Go directly to your ERP solution um, is going to help in a number of ways. The first one is, again, saving or increasing efficiencies. 
you know, let's make it easier. Let's have fewer errors. Let's reduce data entry and duplicate entry. Uh, we can do all of that uh, within this integration. We can save on labor cost by automating those manual processes and then make faster decisions. So why not make better decisions? Why not use data to make those decisions um, with the integration? Um, look at your reports uh, to make decisions about your organization and what you're working on. And then, of course, not having to rekey information, right, means that we have more accurate information um, and ultimately a uh, more effective forecasting. Uh, that's where we need to be. So it kind of sums up our um, ways to kind of empower your organization with integration. But I want to spend just a minute talking about our um, platform specifically. So we're looking at Workforce Go here kind of at a glance, if you will. Uh, we are a modern, born in the cloud, HCM solution that includes all the modules you see here in this graphic. It provides uh, you everything you need to manage employees and their data throughout their entire life cycle, focusing on what matters most, your people and your business. So we have three core modules that includes payroll, timekeeping and HR. And from there, you can add additional modules if it's your priority. So, for example, HR typically is enhanced with learning, performance, recruiting, onboarding, employee engagement. And then from there, we have timekeeping, the timekeeping solution, right, where you're going to be able to clock in and clock out, allows you to allocate time to different cost centers if needed as well. And then, of course, payroll, right? Getting people paid. We want those happy people we saw on screen one. Uh, we want them to know that that they got paid and didn't have to do anything, didn't have to think about it. Uh, we handled all the deductions properly um, and all their tax needs uh, as well. So as you can see, this is a lot happening here. It's a very robust solution and um, with one single employee record. But I'll be honest with you, the true magic happens when this system integrates with your ERP or accounting system. So I'm going to jump us to the next slide and actually pass this over to my coworker, Jessica, so she can talk a bit about the uh, integration with Sage Intact. And we'll kick it off, though, with the integration with Acumatica here. So, Jessica. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mary Sue. Um, so with the integrations, um, we do have um, these, we have had these in integrations in place for a number of years. Um, they are all written through API. So that means, you know, the data is going to move to and from without you needing to interact with it. Um, it's simply going to, to um, communicate effectively and in, in, in real time in most cases. Um, so the standard integration that we do have uh, pulls, in this case, from Acumatica, any of the cost centers, all of your branches, sub-accounts, um, your projects, jobs, tasks, labor items, anything that you would have set up in Acumatica, we're going to pull that into Workforce Go in real time. So that reduces that duplicate data entry, uh, and it makes it immediately available for those that need it to be able to clock time to it for the, the detailed labor allocations and job costing you might need to do. It makes it available for us to um, you know, designate who's in which project as a default. Uh, it could be used for detailed journal transactions that we're gonna send back into Acumatica. So there's a number of uses there. So as things are set up in Acumatica, it, seem, it feeds directly into the Workforce Go cost centers. Uh, we also have the ability for us to take the employee information from Workforce Go, which would be your main point of entry for any new hires, terminations, or changes that occur throughout the employee's time with you. Um, and all of that, as far as demographics, um, you know, basic name, address, um, and you know, some other basic demographic information would feed back into the Acumatica ERP employee record. That allows you to have that information kept up to date for user access. Uh, it also allows, if you're paying them through accounts payable, there to be an employee record there uh, to pay against that you can set up further AP information for. Um, we also, with the time collection specifically, we have a bi-directional capability there. Um, so you can have employees that are clocking time to 
uh, work orders in manufacturing or to field service tickets or just entering time in Acumatica, we can pull that into Workforce Go so that we can do all of the labor determinations and rate you know, adjustments that need to happen for payroll and bring that seamlessly in and pay them correctly. Uh, we also have the opportunity for people to collect their time in Workforce Go with, through a myriad of, of formats, and we can talk about those when we get into the platform itself. Uh, but those are entries that we can push back into Acumatica for job cost and billing if needed. Post payroll, we automatically push our journal back into Acumatica so that you don't have to touch it, so it can be a final posted entry, or you can push it in there as a draft that then gets reviewed and released when you're ready. So we do have um, um, quite a bit of data that's moving back and forth, um, but as we've developed this uh, technology on our own, we do have our development staff that is able to put into place other things. So that's always a conversation that we have when we're getting into some evaluations, if there are other areas of information you want to push back and forth. Those are things that we could certainly um, have for discussion points. And if you can go to the next one. And, and similar for intact. Um, so with intact, you've got your dimensional values. You have all of the um, same type of things that you'd set up uh, for your jobs, projects, tasks, and, and whatnot. We do the same as we do with Acumatica. We pull that in in real time for use in allocations, journals, and other purposes in the system. Post payroll, we push over the journal transaction. We push over time and labor if there's a need for those time activities to go back into intact. Um, same thing with employee information. If there's a need to have them set up in intact or pay them through accounts payable, um, that is going to keep those two systems in sync. Um, so again, we, we have um, flexibility here uh, if there are other areas uh, in addition to this that we need to talk through. All right, so I think, is there another slide that we need to speak to? Or are we ready to go in and see the system? I think we're ready. Okay. So how are we doing on time? We got about 30 minutes left. So I'm gonna go in and share my screen. Okay. Come into this so I can see it. Are we navigating okay on the other end here? Yes. All right, thank you. So I've come into the system already logged in as my administrator. Um, Kathy has access to see and do everything. And I just want to kind of touch on some of the areas that Mary Sue um, discussed in the intro part of what we're, we're going through today. Uh, with any of the self-service and the engagement and all of that, there are so many ways that we can facilitate that. And it really comes down to what is going to be most effective for your employees, what your preferences are, what your frequency of communication, how they like to see data. Um, and then those are ways that we can kind of set the system to work best for your specific needs. Um, so overall, the system is entirely in the cloud. Behind the scenes, it is one employee record. So as you consider what your you know, staff might need to see or what you need to see, it'll all be in one location. It's simply deciding what we configure get you trained on, whether we have it in the system or we don't. Um, and it's also down to the individual employee. What level of access do they need? Are they an approver? If so, of what? Do they need to get communications at the admin level so they're aware of certain things that may be coming down the pike? Um, so there's all sorts of different ways that we might configure that. So in my examples, you're going to see everything open for Kathy, who's my administrator. I'm going to spend some time in here as my employee showing you kind of what that experience might look like. Um, but as, as we get into this, I'm going to start with kind of an overall uh, as we look at the look and feel. The um, branding color scheme, all of that can change. The logo can change. Um, so this will be down to your, your color scheme for your RBG color scheme, if, if you'd like it there. Uh, across the top, we have dashboard capabilities. So being able to get into your information analyze the data that you see there. If I wanted to say come into payroll, for instance, I've got two tiles in here. These are my dashboards that I could configure. So analytics is a big piece of what companies need to do as well to help manage engagement and decide, you know, what staffing may need to occur, what um, costs are going to be forecast for next year for employment, because we all know that's one of the biggest expenses. 
So there's a lot of different ways you might slice and dice the information, and you can kind of toggle between the different types or, or the different looks and feels that you may have. So you have a lot of analytic capabilities within here that allow for you to then take the next step and, and do what you need to do with that. So you'll have dashboards, you'll have reports that back all of this up that we can filter and group and sort um, in any way that you see fit. So we have those areas up at the top. I have a start menu in between, and that gives me access to all of my quick links, all of my favorites that I might embed, which is a process, maybe perhaps processing timesheets. It could be a report. Uh, it could be access to a different system or website. So you're able to kind of make the system look and feel how you would um, most benefit from it. And same thing with your employees. We don't need them trying to figure out where their pay stubs are. Let's just put it on their home screen. If we want to link them out to their benefit broker website, um, right to the carrier so they can look at additional information, great. We can put all of that into one place for them. Um, and then we do also have widgets. And depending on what the preference is of how you want to interact with the system, this may be a more efficient way to do so for some people. Okay. Um, so when we talk about some of the communication and some of the engagement options, uh, one of the things I like to, to bring up and kind of show you is this company hub. This comes with the core HR. It's not a separate module, um, but it does allow you to do those types of engagement activities. So if you want to put out here what's happening in your social media, if you want to put in um, company announcements or things that you're doing for community efforts, how to get to the help desk. There's any number of ways that you might use this. And this is for you to have access to um, change at your at your whim. So if something is occurring that you want to put out here as an announcement, say an employee spotlight, um, you can do that, send a communication out to the team and say, hey, everybody, let's you know click here to, to look at the employee of the month. Um, communications can go to your employees through email, uh, through push notification if they have the mobile app downloaded and in use. Uh, and then we also have the option for text messages too. So again, with as Mary Sue said, communication is key, keeping everybody up to speed and, and involved in what the company's doing um, is really um, becoming more of a focus in, in many organizations, at least that I speak with um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so this is part of HR. It's a pretty powerful piece as well um, that does allow you to do some of those uh, types of things. The HR does have the ability to do surveys too. This is a big thing that clients have been asking me about lately is you know, surveys and analytics. So we're able to do an unlimited number of surveys as part of HR to keep you know, a pulse on you know, how are the employees feeling? What was the response to um, you know, something that may have occurred? Or you know, how, do, how do the uh, metrics tie back to you know, what you would expect for certain survey results that you may get? So there's a lot of analytics that you can do around that as well. Um, so that's part of the, the HR system. The interaction with the employees, you know, as we talk about some of these areas of what you want to keep them up to date with, what you might need them to do. Um, to show you some of that, I'm going to come in as one of your employees might look or how it might look for them. As an administrator, I can come into here and just log in as one of the employees, which truthfully, if, if you're administering an HR system, and you have employees that may not be as tech savvy or may not know where to go for certain things, this is a great way to sit down and kind of help them you know, through any of their questions that they may have. Um, so you can log in as the employee and see what their exact look and feel might be. So with the employee, he doesn't have his dashboards, but he's got very succinct um, shortcuts of things that he might need to get to. Um, so this is where you could have uh, any of the um, items that get assigned to them. We could have a checklist for onboarding, for training. Uh, we might have um, checklists that are for disciplinary actions or performance improvement plans, but this allows that process to keep going forward. So employees would have checklists that they could interact with, with reminders and notifications that, hey, this has been assigned to you. Uh, for instance, a training plan. This course has been assigned to you. you know, if they don't interact with it in a couple of days, maybe another reminder goes out. Um, so we can help with a lot of the process flow. We can give your employees the access to that information without you needing to stay on top of it um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but things that the employees can get into through the self-service, and again, through a mobile phone or an app. 
So if they're on a phone or a tablet, they can do all of this there as well. Uh, but they can get in and they can do um, look at their pay stubs. They can look at their W-2s, 1095s. We even have a total comp statement that's part of the system. So if it's something that you wanted to roll out, which I'm going to show this because, frankly, many people are asking me about it lately. So I know it's a hot topic for a lot of our clients. Um, but you can put your own messaging out here. Shows how their income is, is broken down. Different ways. And then you can even tie in bonuses, um, benefits with employer components of the, the medical maybe retirement plans with the match, time off information. So it's a true total comp statement. Um, so as Mary Sue said, if you're meeting with a financial advisor, this is a great way to have a, a, a nice, quick, you know, um, look at the information. So there's a lot of different things that they can have access to, again, based on what you would like for them to see. They can interact with and make changes to their information. So if they want to update their direct deposit, update their W-4, um, fill out a you know new address change. They can come in and do all of that on their own. You can give them access to all their company documents, so your safety manuals, your handbooks, those types of things. Uh, being able to look something up at 11 o'clock at night instead of waiting for another day. Maybe they have a question about PTO or their FMLA plan or you know short-term disability and things that are going on in their personal lives. They can look that up on their own if they so you know choose, uh, rather than waiting and having to, to come to you and, and get some of that answered. Okay. Um, with the employees and their ability to kind of interact with and, and get access to the information, um, you know, they can see their time off plans and you can allow them to come in and review their time off. They can see, wait a minute, did I actually take 68, 68 hours? Oh yeah, that's right. These are the days that I took off. So uh, this is a question I used to get all the time uh, from my employees. I would be I would be asked how many how much more time off do I have? Or managers that are going into approved time off. How much time do they have? Well, what they, this is going to give them the access to see that. When they do want to do a request, they'll see a calendar view that you can color code. Holidays will be predefined. We can track their schedules. Uh, if we're tracking schedules and they clock in late or leave early, we can track attendance exceptions. Um, you can black out or restrict days. And then they can start a request for whatever type of time off makes sense for them. If they want to do it to a non-accrual plan, they could certainly do that as well. Unpaid leave, jury duty, bereavement, that kind of thing. So they'd enter their information, hit submit request. Notification goes to their supervisor. That supervisor logs in, can see what they need to see to make that decision to approve or decline. Employee receives a notice that it's uh, approved or declined. It updates the timesheet. So the, the time off is just one example of automation like that. Um, that is you know, something I think that, that goes across many organizations. So it's an easy one to kind of show that example of how the system can work in your favor, where you start a process, it goes through its predefined workflow. Once approved, everything's update where it needs to be. Okay. Um, so the other thing with self-service, um, looking at the benefit enrollment, you know, being able to look at, as Mary Sue said, you know, being able to look at, well, what's my coverage? Where do I sit with, you know, this particular plan or that plan? What's my my deductible? Um, having the benefit enrollment as part of Workforce Go allows them to come in and submit a standard enrollment, uh, allows them to go and do open or a life event if something has occurred. So I'm going to come in and just start a new one here. We'll say we have a birth. You can have your own instructions, giving them exactly what they need to know. They'll go through all of the different types of plans that you may offer. So you could have 50 different plans out here. You know, we just went through this at Workforce Go recently, and we had all the legal shields and the AFLACs and the um, commuter and the parking, and so it went on and on. Even just employer paid, info only, hey, this is what you're getting covered for. Um, so all of those we can fit into here. Um, but it really does give them the opportunity to sit at home with their loved ones and decide what is it that makes sense for us to enroll in. So I can add additional family members. I can enroll in different benefits. I can compare plans side by side. I can see the cost 
I can take a look at the website. I can go down into the plan documents and review those and those details that you may have attached. Uh, and then they can start looking at the different coverages and what does it cost. When they make their election, now I can pick my, my dependents. All right. So again, just this as an example of the type of self-service that's available and the type of logic that we can build into a platform like this. So they'll go through and make all their elections, sign off on it. They can take their time doing it, discuss the options um, without needing to have you know, 30 different pages of paper that they have to look at or turn back into you and handwrite. And hopefully you can decipher what it is that they wrote. Um, so all of this, again, just an example of some of that workflow, the automation, the level of access that employees have, um, and that frankly they require at this uh, time in our lives, you know, with the technology that is available. Um, as we talk about some of the engagement and keeping up with, um, you know, ongoing feedback, goals and KPIs are again another area that I hear a lot. Uh, from my clients that they want to be able to have more meaningful conversations on a regular basis. Well, what do you do with that? Where do you put it? Well, we can put it in here rather than a piece of paper that might get lost or an Excel spreadsheet or something maybe that um, isn't as secure. And frankly, some of these conversations aren't, they don't need to be public knowledge. So they don't need to have um, the potential for others that you know, aren't supposed to see it to have access to it. So having it in a secure system tied to an employee is a great place for it. Um, it also allows it to be used then after the fact for performance reviews. Uh, so if it's doing well or if they're doing well or they're not doing well, it's a, it's a case for a raise or perhaps it's a case for termination that you're building. Um, we've, been, we've all been on both sides. So uh, with any of these goals, I'll come into one that already exists here. You can have the company goals that you cascade down to everybody or to a specific department. And then you can also have personal goals. So I'll come into, oh, let's do a 90 day check in. Why not? Um, so any of these you can define. So in this case, it's a 90 day check in. It's effective to and from. You could have a full description here and you could add links, pictures, videos, tables, format it however you see fit. Define what type of uh, goal this is. Is it functional? Is it safety? You can define what your list is here as well. Um, is it rolling up to performance reviews or not? Is it public or private? Do we want anybody with access to this person's goals to see it? Or is it private just to the author so that maybe, you know, if it's something that we want to keep just to ourselves for um, tracking about the employee that we're, you know, um, analyzing, perhaps this is something that we just keep private. Um, so we can do all sorts of other types of tracking around a particular goal or KPI, even if this is just a weekly one-on-one -on -one and you want a place for it. Uh, down at the bottom, you have notes. So I can either have notes that I share with the employee. So we're sitting down talking together, you know, hey, this is how we're doing this week, or this is what we discussed on our one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, our weekly meetings, whatever you want to call it. You can have the notes that are out here so that it's available for everybody to see that needs to see it. Um, or it could be private. So if, again, you want to just have a place to track, this is what we need to talk about. This is what we need to do. You know, this is the last chance. So we need to improve or is termination. Uh, it could also be a great place for somebody to track notes for annual reviews. You know, I, I do that personally because I don't remember what I've done throughout the year. At the end of the, at the, end of the year when it's time for, for performance reviews, um, I don't remember. I would love to have a place to put notes. Um, so that's a good example for this as well. All right. So goals, KPIs, and then of course, you know, all, all things are getting audited. So we can always see what's going on. We can attach documents. Um, but the goals, you know, as we think about the ongoing feedback, great place to do that. And then the performance reviews, uh, we can do those, whether it's, you know, a 60, 90 day review every six months, each year, if we based on anniversary, base it on you know, specific calendar date. Uh, the performance uh, reviews is a great enhancement to help with, with that, that um, employee feedback and keeping them you know, in line with what the company's initiatives need to be. Okay. I'm going to um, kind of finish up with a couple of areas that are um, most common 
within the, the HR. I know there's, there's so much that we could cover. Uh, from a process flow and an, um, from an employee or a manager self-service. Um, today, I just kind of wanted to give you some of the highlights of areas you know, of engagement and ways that employees can be proactive, uh, ways that you can help them be proactive. Um, if they aren't inclined to come into this on a regular basis, reminders and notifications through email and push notifications are, are pretty, pretty slick uh, to help them. Uh, if they're not just sitting down, which let's be real, how many employees sit down in their self-service every day? Um, so the last area I want to kind of cover from the employee's perspective um, is the onboarding. So once you have an employee, whether you use our recruiting and applicant tracking component of Workforce Go or if you source it elsewhere, uh, once you have a candidate that is getting brought on as an employee, you can uh, go in and create a basic employee record. They then could receive an email, welcome to the company, here's the information to download your mobile app, here is the access to the online um, portal for you to go in and complete your onboarding paperwork. Uh, maybe they don't get an email, maybe you have them sit down through orientation or as one, you know, one to one session with the HR person so they can walk them through the information. Whatever it might be, this is the platform that they can use for that. Um, so what you'll see over here on the left is a checklist. So the checklist can encompass as many different forms, tasks, videos, whatnot that you may need to assign for that. Um, each of those can have instructions that you can allow them to add notes and you can include an attachment that they download and review. Uh, any form that you upload, you don't have to recreate, you're just making it a fillable PDF. Um, so it's kind of nice that you can plug and play if you have a new update to the form. You can roll it out to everybody, have them sign off on it. Um, you can embed it in your onboarding checklist so that the new form is available for anybody that comes on board after that. It's not something you need to have somebody help you with if, unless you want it. That's what the support's for. Um, but it's, it's entirely up to you um, as to, to how often you want to change that and if you're comfortable doing that on your own. So all of the forms that you have them go through, um, all of the, the standard company forms, but also the I-9, the state and federal W-4. Uh, hopefully you'll never have this many I-9s. I do a lot of demos. Uh, so I have a lot of I-9s out there that I have to clean up. But um, for any of these, essentially, it's the exact form that you're just making fillable. So you can do radio buttons and date fields and drop downs, make things required, have them do an electronic signature or just enter in their username and password to sign off on documents. So all of those um, different options are things that we get into specifics with you on. Um, however, the process is yours to define. Do we want them completing their direct deposit? If so, oops, I don't want to submit it, I want to add. Um, if so, they can enter this on their own at the time of hire or later. So again, these are just some examples of how we can keep a process flow in place. This is an example of an onboarding. You could also do the same for offboarding. It could be that you're doing a, a performance improvement, a training plan, a succession plan, anything that requires a series of steps by one or more people. It's going to help you keep those processes in place. You can send reminders. You can send notifications. Um, in the example of this onboarding, it's going to be, you know, what we're looking at here is just the employees portion. Uh, but you may also have items that are assigned to a manager to, you know, communicate to everybody, hey, you know, click here to, you know, see a little blurb or, you know, Josh is starting on Monday or, you know, whatever it is that you'd like to say to introduce the team to the new person that's coming on. Okay. So I am going to come out of my checklist. And I'm going to come back into my administrative view. So I'm just going to come back in here as Kathy. Um, the last area that I want to touch on is we think about just employee feedback, engagement, um, processes that we can keep in place and how we can manage that. Um, the last area that I just want to touch on, and that'll take us to the end of, of the um, portion today, and, and we can open it up for questions after that. I just want to show you uh, one of the performance reviews just as a basic example. So I'm going to come in here and I hope pick the right one because I've got several that are in various states. One second. Ah, I got the wrong one. One sec. Pick ants. 
Okay. So with any of the performance reviews, you know, if we have those goals that we're rolling up to um, the performance, great. If you want to keep it separate and you just want to have a standard performance review, that's fine too. Um, but we can measure on the values, competencies, and goals. We can weight them differently. We can weight the goals differently. You can have your own instructions that you put out here. Under the entry, I see my first one is personal integrity. Here's my lovely flowery description. I can see how it's weighted. And then whether you're having an employee review or a manager review or both, the process they go through is to look at and grade themselves. So I'm meets or exceeds. What does that equate to? Do we have a raise that goes along with this? Um, if so, those values could equate to a certain calculation for that. Um, so they'll be able to put in their own words, links, pictures, videos, tables, attachments, anything that they want to support what their review, review is, is stating. So they can go through and enter. I can have a general comment at the bottom. It doesn't tie to anything. As a manager, I can see prior reviews. I can look at goals that we talked about earlier. You can look at their job description. We can do peer feedback if you want to have um, 360 reviews. We can also look at incidents, which could be disciplinary actions, uh, attendance issues, injuries, awards. It could be anything that you want to um, create as just an incident for the, the employee. So all of this they can go through, again, just as we think about the communication, the feedback, uh, employee engagement. Um, this is a great way to, to help foster that as well. Um, let them put, the, put this in their own words um, and then what do we do from here with it once everybody's done? Is it going to tie into new compensation? Are they going to get a bonus? Are they going to change managers? Are they going to change where they report to? If so, let's kick off the next step of a merit increase and get that approved and into the system. Okay. All right. And I think um, as far as topics for today, to kind of tie back into what you were talking about, Mary Sue, I think that's um, what I'm going to have for, for what we'll, we'll cover in, in a brief overview for today. If we want to open it up for any questions, I'm happy to address any questions, functional or otherwise. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jessica, for, you know, really giving us a good view of every, all the capabilities of the platform. Um, I did have a couple questions that came through throughout. So um, this, you know, leans more towards Workforce Go um, as, as, a, as a solution. So what kind of support model do you have? We actually have a dedicated support rep model. So as clients come on board, they get through the implementation process, they're introduced to their dedicated account manager. That person is who they would connect with if there were any questions, if they were having us process payroll for them, taxes, um, that person would be their contact to reach out to. So it's not a call center environment. Uh, it's more personalized and um, dedicated with the account manager that you have. Awesome. And to add to that, we do have a dedicated um, HCM team at SWK as well that works hand in hand with uh, our partners at Workforce Go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think probably unless we have another submission here, and I do encourage the audience, if you have any more questions, you can submit them now. Um, but our next question is, you know, how do you handle month end accrual accruals? Oh, okay. Good question. So um, with the integration, of course, we're pushing our journal transaction uh, back into, you know, the ERP system. We have the ability for those that need it, that manage the month end accruals manually or they're, you know, doing something else. Uh, we can configure the integration to handle that and we can do it based on actual hours worked if we have that data in Workforce Go. Or we can do it based on a percent. Uh, so if the, the month end accrual is something that you're spending and, you know, a lot of time on or doing manually, that's a part of the integration that we, we could configure so that you're getting the in and the out entry for the current month and the in entry for the next month automatically. 
Awesome. Great to hear. Well, I think that concludes, um, that's all the questions I have for the day. So I think we can, you know, wrap up today. Um, Mary Sue, Jessica, any, any last questions before we wrap things, any last words before we wrap things up? No, just thank you for the opportunity to, um, speak with you and, and with your clients and, uh, we will be here if anybody has any, uh, interest in talking further, we'll be here to help. Yep, agreed. I would say thanks so much to everyone for joining us and certainly thanks SWK for um, allowing us to be here today. So appreciate it. Yes, and if you think of any uh, any other questions or you'd like to learn more about the solution and how it can you know directly integrate with your ERP, reach out to your SWK rep or you know let us know in the follow-up survey and we'll be sure to have someone contact you. So thank you everyone for taking some time out of your day to be with us and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and weekend. Wonderful. Thanks again. Thank you.